Hello everyone, here we are at the Computer Museum of America in Roswell, Georgia. Among other things, this museum has the largest collection of Cray supercomputers in the entire world. Right here you're looking at serial number 13 of the Cray 1 family from the 1970s. By the way, the C shape of this computer is to keep the cards closer together to minimize wiring. And then the bench area is the power supply and the cooling system. Here's the Cray 1M, circa 1982. And there's a panel removed so you can see the circuit cards lined up in there. And then there's about 50 miles of wiring over on this side. And coming up here, another version of the Cray 1M. Here's a Cray 10 or Cray X, not sure which, and a cool mural of uh, Seymour Cray here in the background. And here are some models from Intel and also Cray again from the early to mid 80s. Here's some silicon graphics machines from the early 90s. Quite possibly the type they used to do uh, the first Jurassic Park movie. And here's also another Cray model from the early 90s. Silicon graphics actually owned part of Cray for a while in the late 90s. And Hewlett Packard owns them as of October of last year. Here's some Sun Microsystems machines from the late 90s.
And here's one of the first machines that Pixar Corporation developed to do their unique computer animation that we're all familiar with. Coming up here on a Cray model from the mid 90s. Here's a silicone graphics machine from the mid 90s. And some more mid 90s cray systems. Here's a Cray cooling unit. More mid 90s cray machines. And yet some more cray machines from the early to mid 90s. Again, the world's largest collection of cray supercomputers on Earth, right here. And here's a late 80s Cray machine. Here's Cray machines from the mid to late 90s, including this really cool heat exchanger. I actually saw one of these running at the Space Center in Huntsville back in the late 90s. Here's a collection of systems from the uh, 2000s. We got IBM, Cray Machine, Silicon Graphics. Sun. And some more from our buddies Cray. Hello. Now we're in another part of the museum where we have a great collection of microcomputers and mini computers and some other really cool little treats we'll show you along the way. Here's some of these kit build mini computers from the 1970s. This one's really cool because you see the Radio Electronics magazine cover with this mini computer that you can build. 
And there it is. He built it. Electronics magazine cover, and there it is, built. Built from kits. Here is a special treat. This is an Apple One motherboard. There's only a handful of these in the whole world out there. Not many of these were produced. Back here, you've got the Norden bomb site and some other cool electronic gadgetry. You got the calculators, including some laid out on a big motherboard. Classic Apple II, Apple's first big selling product. TRS-80. And the Commodore PET, which one of these was shown working at the Orlando show. There's IBM's PC. Here's some cool stuff from uh, Atari and some of the others. We got games, the Atari 400 computer, and a speak and spell. Here's the good old Commodore 64 and the VIC 20, among other things. And here is a collection of every Byte magazine cover, starting in 1975. Notice how this starts out real spacey and hippie looking, really. And then by the time you get to the 90s, it looks real prim and proper as far as the graphics of the covers. Here we have some hardware. It looks like it's from the 60s and 70s, although I'm not exactly sure. Some company names I've never heard of and some that I have, such as Digital Equipment Corporation. By the way, this museum has about one-eighth of the stuff that they have on display. Just wrap your mind around that. That magazine article talks about computers being affected by the full moon. And here's a machine that must have been loved by its users. You see the little rest in peace sign written on it, probably when it was disassembled.
And we've got punch card readers here. Some real retro stuff. Pretty cool. So there's actually a substantial Apollo program exhibit here, including a, a video you can watch. Some may wonder why at a computer museum. Well, the Apollo program really was the main driver in enabling many and microcomputers to exist due to the size constraints for the spacecraft. Up ahead there is a 70% scale model of a lunar module. Pretty impressively done based on the real thing. Here's a couple spacecraft controller sticks. Looks like real hardware to me. And some other cool memorabilia. Something signed by Neil Armstrong. There's also another area with all of their signatures. That's the movie going on in the background in that room. And then here's a Russian and then American timeline of space exploration leading up to the Apollo 11 landing. And thanks for joining me on this tour of this wonderful museum.